Welcome to our live training session number 26, part four. In this video, we're gonna take a look at tuning our fuel and ignition timing tables as well as our cam angle on our high cam or our VTEC operation. We're gonna have a lot to cover, so let's jump into our live training session so we can get started checking out how to do this properly. Welcome back to our live training session here with our naturally aspirated 9th gen Civic Si. Now in the last video, we mapped out the remaining fuel and spark timing tables for our zero, 15 and 30 degree cam angle tables. And we found if we take a look real quick here, that was we're going up in our cam angles as we're driving, going up and, and walking up from uh, zero to 15 to 30, we found that 30 gave about the highest torque that we found. And then going higher than that would have definitely lost because as we were ascending and going up, essentially wasn't doing anything. So we built out our variable cam table. It looks like this, this is what it ended up with. Um, and it ended up giving us the broadest power curve possible in our, from our columns eight, nine, and 10. And then in our normal areas of operation from columns one to seven, having our variable cam locked at 30 degrees gave us the, the, uh, the best economy. So this is the map that we built. Now we're ready to move into the high cam and do the same thing. So for the high cam operation, let's jump into our high cam table. I have to click off my lightning bolt right now. I'm on my live data. So I'm able to go in here and I'm able to click on my high cam table. So when I do that, we'll find here in our zero degree, we have to go in and optimize some things first. We'll find that our breakpoints go from 8,000 to 500 RPM here, or 550, I can't tell right now. There's a cursor over that position. Um, we're gonna go and re-optimize our breakpoints first and try to get this a little bit better for application. So what I'm gonna do, starting off the top end of the table here, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna set my top breakpoint here at 7,600, and then move down here, I'm gonna be moving in, um, let's go here in 300 RPM increments. I'll go to 73, I'll go here, oh, let's try this, go to 7,000. So we'll just right click here, pretty basic to do this, 7,000. Um, and it looks like the reason it's not gonna be letting it go to 7,000 because the breakpoint below here is actually at 7,000. So we need to go and start to move down our rows here um, and start to shift down some of our points uh, because this is going to be interfering with our breakpoint below it. So we're not able to scale it at or below the breakpoint that's going to be lower than this. So 72 right here, I was trying to scale to seven, 7,000. Is the, is the next breakpoint. I wanted to put that at 7,000, but I'm able to do that. So what we'll have to do is move down our, our uh, rows here. Um, let's go here and start to lower these way down here just to get them out of the way. Let's click back on here. Let's right click. Let's do at 2,100. We're just gonna have to do this as a workaround right now. It's a little bit annoying to do breakpoint rescaling, uh, but we have to take care of it before we get started tuning because if we have a, any kind of uh, discrepancies going on and we wanna change our breakpoints, we are gonna to have to go do more fuel in a spark timing tuning, which we wanna avoid. Well, let's take care of it right now so we can uh, go in and tune everything at one shot and not have to come take, take a step backwards and uh, fix everything. So again here, we'll just right click 2800. I'm doing this so that I can lower these down. You'll see in a second here why I'm able to then just command what I want for my next breakpoint and not have to any, have any interfering going on. Let's go here at 31. Let's go here at 32. And we can go here at 